and welcome to Laugh So Create. My name is Rebecca. In today's tutorial, we're going to make the Sunshine Crossbody Pouch by Bagstock Designs. If you hear panting in the background, it's because I have my furry friends with me assisting me in the sewing room today. This pattern is a free pattern, so head on over to her website and grab a copy for yourself and download it and also peruse her other bags. So many pretty patterns for handbags and pouches. So the reason why I think that this crossbody pouch is a great stepping stone if you're a beginner and you're wanting to advance your sewing skills, pouches are a great way to explore your skills with even mixed materials. You don't need a whole lot of materials and that's what's fun about pouches. So they're relatively quick. So it's a really cute size. So you could wear it as a crossbody or just over your shoulder. And the skill level is marked as a beginner. The finished project is about 10 and a half inches wide at the bottom and then it's seven and a half inches in height and three inches in depth. Let me bring you in and let me show you some of the supplies that you'll need for this project. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is print your pattern at 100% scale. You want to make sure that you check the square in the pattern. Uh, there's a two by two inch square and you want to make sure that it actually does measure that. And then you're going to cut out all your pattern pieces. So you will need a fat quarter of quilting weight exterior fabric and then a contrasting fabric. Now in this case, I have chosen to use vinyl as the contrasting fabric. You can mix and match cotton with the vinyl. If you've got leather, you could also use that or just do it 100% all the way with cotton. So you're gonna need some fusible interfacing such as SF 101 or woven fuse or something like that. You're going to need some foam. The pattern actually states woven interfacing with foam, but they give you options as far as if you just want to do something like a medium weight interfacing, like Palin 809, that would be another option. You're going to need three zippers, and I'm actually using zipper by the yard. So I cut these longer by two inches, and I'll show you why. And then you'll need a number three zipper. It's just an all-purpose zipper. Cut one at 13 inches, one at 10 inches, and then the number three zipper, nine inches. I've gone ahead and back tacked on all the ends of the zippers just to make sure that I don't take the zipper head and fling it off while I am sewing. So you'll need a zipper tab, then you will need two connectors and I'm going to make the connectors out of the vinyl. I'm going to be using vinyl for the crossbody strap. You need two three quarter inch D rings, two three quarter inch swivel hooks if you're going to be making the crossbody version, and one three quarter inch slider. Again, this is if you're going to be making the, the crossbody strap. I'm going to attach a little bag tag, but it is optional. So the pieces that you're going to be having are the exterior center top panel and the exterior front center bottom panel. And I've gone ahead and interfaced both of these with a woven fuse. And so one of your zippers will go between these two pieces. And you'll have one exterior back center panel. And then these are the exterior side panels. And one pair will be for the front panel and one pair will be for the back panel. Then for the pockets, you will need one lining of the exterior front zipper pocket panel. Need two cuts of the interior zipper pocket panel. And again, both of these have been fused with interfacing. Then you'll need two cuts of lining and both of them will be also fused with the interfacing. And then for the exterior panel foam, you'll need two of those. So these are optional, but very helpful if you have some on hand as a, a rotary cutter and mat, along with a grid ruler for cutting your pieces. You can just use fabric scissors. You also wanna make sure that you're using some 
paper scissors to cut out your patterns. And I also like to use some snips. So in addition to the iron and ironing board, you'll need your sewing machine. So depending on the materials that you're using, if you're using cotton, then you can go ahead and use the pins. If you're doing the vinyl or cork or leather, you definitely wanna have some of these clips on hand. A marking tool to find the center of your pieces. Seam ripper in case we have a whoops. And I'm using some double-sided tape from uh, Tandy Leather. It's, I use it with my sewing machine. It doesn't have problems, but you may want to opt for something like a wonder tape. And the wonder tape will wash away. Or you could also use a fabric glue stick. You ju you'll just have to wait for it to dry. You'll need some coordinating thread. A Teflon foot if you're using vinyl or cork or leather is useful. If you don't have that, you can use some scotch tape on the bottom of your standard foot. You'll need your standard foot and zipper foot. In my case, I have a narrow hinge foot with the Juki sewing machine, so I will not be swapping out the feet when I attach the zipper. So let's get started. You'll want to cut out all your pieces of fabric. You'll want to make sure that your pieces are fused. If you're using cork or vinyl, that is the beauty of using some of this stuff is that you don't have to interface it. You'll only have to interface the pieces that are made out of cotton. Okay, so now that all the marks are placed, I'm going to go ahead and match the side panel to the exterior back panel and I'm going to match it up on the sides as well as the dots for the 3 8 seam allowance. I want to make sure that they're on top of each other and as you can see the side panel is kind of going to jut out but when it's sewn down the seam it's going to line up well. So again marking those spots really does help keep the side panels lined up well. Okay, so next I'm going to sew down the sides at 3 8 of an inch. I'm going to start with my needle in the down position at the very beginning. And I'm sewing down at 3 8 of an inch. So instead of back stitching, I'm going to hold my threads. And instead of cutting the threads, I'm going to pull the threads out so I can now take a pin and pull the threads to the back and tie the knot on the back. And I'll tie it about three or four times and repeat on the other side. Okay, so I finished one side. I went down and top stitched at an eighth of an inch. I'm going to show you how I did that on the other side. I finished stitching. Then I'm using some double sided tape. If you have one of these rollers, it's useful, or you could just do it with your fingers actually to press it. And now I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. I'm using my Teflon foot to glide down. Hold the tails out and I'm just using the width of the Teflon toe as my guide. It's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to tie on off on the back. And if your needle gets sticky because of the glue from the tape, you can clean it off with alcohol. Okay, now that both of the sides are top stitched, you're gonna set your panel, to the back panel to the side, and you're going to grab your exterior front bottom panel and the top panel, and you're also gonna grab the exterior front zipper panel. And we're gonna do some marking, so you'll need your marking tool. We are going to mark 
the center bottom of the top panel as well as the center of the bottom panel. And I did go ahead and attach the label. So if you're gonna do that, you probably wanna do it now. So all you're gonna do is just fold each of them in, in half and just kind of pinch it to find your center point. Now since that's a really dark spot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of nick it, not too deep of one just so I can tell where it is and then do the bottom of the top center panel. And then the pocket lining, because it's dark, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to cut out a little tiny V. Okay, so you'll also wanna grab the zipper front for the front panel, and that will be the shorter number five zipper. Mark the center points. You're gonna take the front exterior bottom panel, and you're going to take the zipper, and with the fabric facing the right side up, you're going to take the zipper and place it face down, and you're going to want the zipper pull off to the left-hand side, matching the center points and clipping. And this is why it is good to have a zipper that is longer because you can move the zipper head out of the way. That way you don't have to worry about trying to go around it when you're stitching. This makes it a lot easier. And at this point, if you require a zipper foot, go ahead and put that on. And then I'm gonna stitch all the way across at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance or from the edge using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. You're gonna make sure that you have the exterior front center bottom panel facing up. And then you're going to take the exterior front zipper pocket lining panel and you're going to flip it face down. And you're going to match the short edge where it's marked and you're going to align the center points and clip it. And take it to the sewing machine and you can use the same stitching line and stitch all the way across to secure the pocket panel to the front center panel. So you're not gonna start all the way at the end, you're just gonna start where the center panel is, back stitching at the beginning and end. Okay, so next you're going to push away the panels away so that the wrong sides are facing each other. You're pulling away and I'm gonna top stitch down at an eighth of an inch away from the edge, 3.5 millimeter stitch length. Okay, so next you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna take the bottom of the pocket panel and flip it up to where the edge, and you can actually also find the center point that way it'll make it a little bit more precise. Clip it and you want to make sure that the edges line up well on the sides as well. And then I'm going to top stitch it in an eighth of an inch from the edge using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. So what I'm doing is if it's for construction purposes, the sewing, then I'll use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. If it's top stitching, I'll use a three millimeter stitch length. The only exception to that is if I'm dealing with a vinyl, then I'm trying to keep to a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. One thing you just wanna make sure that you did catch the zipper on the other side all the way across. Okay, next you're gonna grab the exterior front center top panel and you're going to match the center points. You're gonna flip it right side facing down and you're going to match the center points to the center point of the zipper. So your center bottom panel should be facing the right side up as well. So right sides matching. And you're gonna clip. So using your zipper foot still, you want to stitch with a 3 8 seam allowance from the edge. Now if you're using a number 3 zipper, the designer has made adjustments with the seam allowance so you'll need to pay particular attention to that. And again I'm using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Okay, then you're gonna flip it up and press away and top stitch 
And ideally you want the gap between the zipper teeth and each of the edges to be consistent and even. You wanna double check to make sure you've got a nice line with the bottom. Okay, and just to make sure, can I open it up? Peek inside and make sure you have the right, <laughs> all the right sides together. Okay, so now we're gonna base the sides down. One thing you wanna make sure is to move the zipper head in, because if not, you're gonna base the zipper head off and that could be a problem. All right. Okay, next we're gonna, I'm just gonna trim off. Okay, at this point, the directions tell you to get the exterior back center panel pattern piece and double check that everything is matching. So at this point, follow the same directions I did earlier by attaching the exterior side panels, same way as we did with the back. Okay, so at this point, we have to attach the foam to the panels, and I did use the template to cut it smaller so it would be out of the seams. Okay, so next I'm going to top stitch again, this time through the vinyl and the foam. I'm going to top stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to repeat that for the back panel as well. Okay, next you want to grab your connectors if you're going to be doing the cross strap. Mark halfway, you're just going to crease it and then you're going to put the raw edges in and then it should measure three quarters of an inch for the connector to go through the rings and then top stitch down either side with one eighth inch seam allowance. So I'm actually going to use double sided tape and then press the outside edges in as best as you can and then I'm going to top stitch down the sides and repeat for the other connector. Grab two of the D rings and slip through the connectors, stitch to secure the D-ring in place, taking care not to hit the metal. Okay, so the connectors are done. So you just want to make sure it's an inch down and um, not exactly flush to the edge, but you want it to overshoot it by a little bit, just because I've had it in the past where you sew and you actually miss it or it's kind of loose and then it pops out. The thing is you want to make sure that it is um, parallel to the top and not askew when you sew it on. Okay, so I'm going to sew it in place an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so now both of the connectors are on. Next, you'll grab the interior zipper pocket panels. So take it to the ironing board and you're going to turn it up by a quarter of an inch. I went ahead and drew a line just so I had a gauge. So you'll grab one of the lining panels and you'll flip it over so that the wrong side is facing up. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle that measures seven inches wide by three eighths inches in height. So actually I'm going to find the center first. And then I'm gonna come down another three eighths of an inch. So it's gonna be two and three eighths. Then you're going to draw like a V and this is just preparing for the zipper. Okay, so you want to take the lining panel and have it face up and take the pocket panel and you're going to place it face down matching the center points and you want to put it at one inch down from the top and pin it. Okay, so then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew all the way around the rectangular box and then I will slit the opening on this line and then slit on the V, taking care not to cut into the stitching line. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, so I'm going back around because I messed up. <laughs> You're supposed to have the pocket panel attached to to this when you're stitching around the box and I didn't. Now I'm going to slit through. Try that again. 
I knew something was awry. <laughs> Pass the pocket through and then press it. If you get a little puckering action, you can clip a little bit closer to the stitching. Just be careful not to clip in. And if you do, you can just go back around like kind of like what I did and press that. So grab your three inch zipper, the inside zipper, and you're going to place it in the window and center it. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to put some double-sided tape on the back of the window. And I like to do one side at a time. So I'll take the sticky part off. I'm gonna do the bottom first. You wanna make sure that the zipper is going with the zipper head on the left-hand side. I'm gonna pull, pull the zipper head in. Okay, and then I'm going to take off the top. And then you just wanna to try to make sure that the distance to the zipper teeth is about the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna to top stitch all the way around at an eighth of an inch. And you'll probably, you'll see it because I'm using the white thread. Grab the other remaining zipper panel. You're gonna flip lining panel down so that the wrong side is facing up and you're going to place the remaining pocket panel facing down so that it has right sides facing each other and you'll want to make sure that the edges that you turned up by a quarter of an inch are matching and I'm going to stitch all the way around using a quarter inch seam allowance back stitching on either side leaving the bottom open and when you do sew around you want to make sure that the lining is well out of the way so you'll fold it so as you're moving around make sure that that under, the lining underneath is folded out of the way. And just double check to make sure that you got everything caught. You trim on the outside where I just stitched. Okay, and just set it to the side. I'm gonna grab the last zipper. I marked down about an inch with a friction pen. Pinch right at that red line. And the goal is to bend the teeth to where you get an almost 90 degree angle, like that and clip it and repeat for the other side. So just pinch it and bring the fold up to the teeth almost like so. It may take you several tries. <laughs> take it to the sewing machine and stitch just on the very edge. Trim the zipper to 10 and a quarter inches. So for the zipper tab, crease it, and then you're gonna put the raw edges in towards the center and then fold it again. So now it looks like the proverbial little hot dog bun. And you wanna make sure that it is measuring two inches in length and three quarters of an inch wide. So you're gonna grab your zipper end and you're going to slide the end of the zipper in until it hits the back side of the little hot dog bun and center it and clip it. You just wanna make sure that the edges are lined up so that when you stitch in an eighth of an inch, you're catching both sides. And again, the stiletto can help you guide it through. Snip off the extra part of the hot dog bun. Okay, so you're gonna grab the exterior front panel and have it right side up. And then you're going to place the zipper and I'm just gonna find the center point on the zipper, the center point of the main panel. I'm going to line up the center points. You wanna make sure that the zipper is facing down. So right side of the zipper is to right side of the exterior panel. You're going to match up the center points and clip. Okay, so using the zipper foot, if you need one, you're gonna stitch all the way across. I'm going to, since it's so thick, I'm gonna do the three and a half, and I'm going to sew a three eighths inch seam allowance. Grab your last lining panel and find the center point again. Place it right side facing down on top of the front panel with the right side up. 
So right sides should be facing each other. Match the center points, clip, flip it over. You use this stitching line as your guide and stitch all the way down. That'll be 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pivot and move the zip head out of the way. Time to flip it to where the wrong sides are together. I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch from the edge and you want to try to catch the top of the foam and that stitching. Pull the threads to the back and tie off. Repeat the process for attaching the other panel and the other lining. So I'm going to place the right sides together matching the center points. You're going to flip it to the other side of the lining and you're going to have the right side of the linings facing each other and then you can clip it and we're going to repeat the top stitching. You want to make sure that the wrong sides of the lining and the exterior panel are facing each other and you want to kind of tug on it to make sure that the lining is pulled away from the zipper and you can um, put some clips there. If you're concerned that your clip's gonna leave a mark, you could always put a piece of paper there. The main panel, you can unzip halfway, and it's time to get this thing assembled. All right, so we're gonna pin, clip the linings together, and then clip the right side exterior panels together. And of course my battery died. So the biggest thing was getting a little bit bigger with a seam allowance on the lining to 5 eighths from a 3 eighths and then picking up and going 5 eighths all the way across the lining bottom. Picking up again, going 5 eighths to a 3 eighths. Sewn all the way around, leaving the box corners open. Okay, so at this point you can press the seams open if you like. I'm going to finger press just because I have vinyl a roller thing that helps as well. You just want it to make sure that you open up the, cor the box corner and then when you go to meet the other side you want to make sure that your seams are lining up and that your seam allowances are splayed open. You kind of want to make sure that your bottom is out all the way or that the corner's coming to like an arrow. You want to clip. And so then all that's left to do is to stitch across at 3 8 of an inch and repeat it for all four corners. You may not be able to see this part. <laughs> Squish it down. You trim down all the seams to a quarter inch except for where the connectors are. Okay, so now it's time to turn the pouch the right side out through the, the zipper. If I didn't zip it shut, which I might just have. <laughs> uh oh. Where we just came and brought the bag through. You can clip it and top stitch it at an eighth of an inch using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. So your pocket goes back in. We're done with the pouch. To make the adjustable crossbody strap, if you're using vinyl, you'll want to find the center point and mark the center all the way down. Then I'm going to put double-sided tape on either side of the line. What you'll do is you'll bring the edges in towards the center on both sides and then repeat fold, top stitching around at an eighth of an inch. Hmm. 
Okay, so with the wrong side facing down, I'm going to take a swivel hook and put it on the strap so it's facing up. Flip it over and take the strap and I'm gonna thread it through the slider and then back through. This could be really tight because it's so thick. go. So then you're going to follow it to the other end and slide on the other slider. And so then you can stitch again at about an inch. Fold it over. It did not go in very straight. <laughs> Okay, so just some general impressions about this crossbody pouch. Um, the first one being its appearance. I think that it is a beautiful crossbody pouch. It is elegant. It is very versatile. I think that you could take this pattern and really turn it into an evening bag. You could make casual. Now more on the construction side, I think that this pouch is definitely a beginner level pouch if you're going to use fabrics that are a little bit thinner. I use this relatively thick vinyl and I did find it more challenging. So I would say that a confident beginner to intermediate if you're going to use a thicker fabric depending also on the machine that you have and its capabilities. If you're going to use vinyl, I would say that the vinyl needle definitely helped when I switched over to it, particularly with the top stitches, getting some even top stitching. Using a longer stitch length for the vinyl was also important because it got really thick with the foam. If you're planning on making this and you are relatively new to bag making, I would recommend that you stay clear of the foam. <laughs> I kept it out of the seams, but I still found it kind of a little more challenging to work with. I would start off with the shape flex and maybe doing like an 809. The strap, pretty straightforward. Again, my vinyl was super thick, so maybe using a thinner vinyl or a cork would be a little bit easier. I thought the pattern and the directions that the photographs in the pattern were clear. Be cognizant when you're matching up your seams at the point where you're pinning everything together in the final step for bag assembly. You want to make sure that you are actually matching up those uh, seams very well, not only at the zipper part at the top, but on the bottom. So I'm going to show you how on, on this one side turned out really well and then my other side was a little offset. So just make sure that when you're boxing the corners that everything's lined up really well. Make sure that all your zippers are open when you go just prior to stitching the pocket, the inside pockets closed, because if you don't, then you won't be able to turn it through. And uh, making the lining on the inside, the seam allowance larger, it worked very well in making the interior lining fit the bag. The bag is a good size. I think it would fit wallet and just your average daily requirements for carrying things around in the purse. It sits up nicely. Now this is with the foam. I hope you give this pattern a try. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, drop them in the comments below. And I hope that these tips as well as, well as the tips that I provided in the tutorial are useful to you.